Hello and welcome to the second section of Mastering TypeScript, Deploying the Type System. In the previous section, we introduced the sample application. Our first video will be on when to use implicit or explicit types. Second video on avoiding the any type. Third on being aware of how TypeScript uses structural typing. Fourth on some common troubles with the type system. Fifth at some compiler options for added support so how we can make the compiler stricter. And finally, a video on enforcing rules and coding standards with an external tool. While writing the sample application, some decisions had to be made about when to explicitly define a type. In this video, we're going to look at how we can decide between implicit or explicit types. First, we'll make sure we understand what we mean by implicit and explicit types. Second, we'll look at the case for using implicit types when able. And finally, when we should be explicit instead of implicit. As you should be aware, TypeScript adds optional static typing to JavaScript. This allows us to use types. For example, we could define a variable as a string, and then we wouldn't be able to assign incompatible types to it, like a date. This helps prevent us from making mistakes in our code. Let's look at implicit types, but what do I mean by that? Here we have a variable that is assigned a string. This variable is of type string because the type has been inferred by the compiler using the type of what was initially assigned to it. We can verify that it's been implicitly typed as a string by hovering our mouse over the variable name in most development environments. Now what do I mean by explicit type? An explicit type is any type that is not inferred, like this variable here, but is explicitly defined like this variable. Here, the type of string is not inferred by the assignment, but is defined when the variable is created. When choosing between an implicit or an explicit type, we should try to find a way to maximize the following goals. 1. Prevent mistakes by restricting the range of possibilities that we can write in our code thereby protecting the programmer from themselves. 2. Write brief and clearly expressed code. Let's take a look at how we can do that. First, let's look at an example with a variable, and I'm going to type this out as we go through this. Our variables should be defined and assigned to in such a way that the variable name and assignment express the type on their own. When looking at this statement, we can see the type of this variable is a date by looking at what is assigned to it, and its name helps. Explicitly defining our variable in this case doesn't help us. We now have duplicate information in our code, and when we want to change the type, we have to change an additional place. Similarly here, if we assign the result of two short date string to a variable short date string, we can tell the type by the name of the variable and by the right-hand side of the expression. Had we not used descriptive names, say name this D, and this method convert, it would be much more difficult for us to figure out what the type of this variable is. This is why it's crucial when using implicit types that we also use descriptive names. Now when should we be explicit? Here are some good rules to follow. 1. Be explicit when the type will be implicitly typed to any, and 2. Be explicit when assigning to a parent type. Otherwise, write descriptive code to eliminate the need to be explicit when the type could be implicit. Let's look at these two cases. Here in number helper, there's a parse string method that takes a string parameter and returns it as a number if the string is able to be parsed as a number. Otherwise, it returns undefined. I've expanded out the body of the method for the sake of this example. Within the method, we have a num variable that is implicitly typed to any, which means the num variable could be assigned a value of any type. It is being implicitly typed as any because no expression is being assigned to it whose type can be inferred, and no type is explicitly defined. But why could not being explicit in situations like this lead to problems? Well, say we accidentally assigned a string to this num variable. 
Since the variable is implicitly typed as any, it doesn't prevent us from doing this, and it doesn't notify us of this mistake with the compiler. Now we will have to run our unit tests before we get notified there is a mistake, then spend time trying to figure out why our test failed. It would be even worse if we didn't have unit tests, as we would have to spend even more time before finding out it was a mistake. And sometimes, we might not even notice a mistake until someone else points it out. Additionally, this method's return type is typed as any because it infers the return type from the return values type, which is the any type. This could lead to further problems for code that uses this parse string method. Not explicitly defining our variables can result in wasted time and bugs. We can eliminate this problem completely from our code by explicitly typing our variables and avoiding the any type. For now, we know it's advisable not to do this, but in a future video in this section, we'll look at how we can force ourselves to never make this mistake. In addition to this first case, we also should be explicit when we want to type a variable as a parent type of the value being assigned to it. For example, with this code, the type on the right-hand side of the assignment is the child type, but we explicitly define this variable as the base type so that the child type is not used. In the end, it's important to find what works for you and your team. Develop a standard and stick to it. The information in this video should help you do that. In this video, we looked at implicit and explicit types, as well as when we should use one over the other. In the next video, we'll look more in depth at why we should avoid the any type.